We're trying to bridge the partisan divide over how to rein in America's skyrocketing deficit. In this Bloomberg exclusive, our chief Washington correspondent is standing by with Virginia Democrat Mark Warner and Georgia Republican Saxby Shambliss. Peter? Matt, thanks very much. I am here with Senator Mark Warner, Democrat of Virginia, Saxby Chambliss, Republican from Georgia. Thanks to both of you. President Obama has uh, praised his deficit commission so far, but he has not accepted any of their recommendations, has not acted on their plan. You two gentlemen are trying to do that here in the U.S. Senate. Senator Warner, uh, you described it on the floor pretty bluntly. It's time for the Senate to put up or shut up? That's right, and I think, uh, you know, Saxby and I have been working on this for months on in with a series of other colleagues. We think this is uh, one of the top, if not the top issue that our country has to confront. And we decided we would go ahead and take that commission report, even though we both got problems with it, and we're going to introduce it as legislation, and we're not going to let that kind of momentum that was starting to build up uh, fade away. Senator Chambliss, you don't like everything in the Deficit Commission report. Uh, tell me why you think as well that this is the right moment to try and reach this kind of bipartisan divide. Well, this is such a massive issue to deal with. It has so many tentacles out there because we're talking about reductions in not only discretionary spending, which we need to do, but we're also talking about the reform of mandatory programs, programs that are so vital to this country, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, that we need to make sure survive for the long term. And the only way we're going to make that happen is to make real reforms in those programs and address the, sp the spending side on discretionary at the same time. Plus, we've got to look at revenues, and all of that is covered by the Debt Commission report. And sure, when it's this exhaustive, there are going to be things in there that um, somebody doesn't like. Everybody's got something about this they don't like, but the good far outweighs the bad. Are you disappointed that it's taking the two of you to get this ball rolling? The president had the opportunity in the State of the Union to step up and say, I embrace this plan, yet he didn't do it. Well, listen, I think there were the fact that this plan got 11 out of 18 votes, that it had senators like Mike Crabo and Tom Coburn on the Republican side and Kent Conrad and Dick Durbin on the Democratic side. That's a fairly broad ideological divide all saying they're in on this as well. Um, I think we're going to need presidential leadership, yes, but I also think we're going to need folks like Saxby and I who said, you know, this is the time to check our Democrat and Republican hats and recognize that we've got to get this fixed. And there's got to be a little bit of uh, everybody's got to have some skin in the game. So the fact that the Deficit Commission has both spending cuts and tax reform, I think, says let's start with this vehicle. We, it'll change. Uh, we're going to need the president in the game. We're going to need the business community in the game but we can't keep kicking this ball down the pike. Well, listen, I'm going to ask you both to sit tight to, if you could come back after the break. Have more questions for Senator Mark Warner, Senator Saxby Chambliss on their efforts to try and bridge the gap here in Congress over dealing with the deficit. More after this short break. Stay with us here on Bloomberg. You've got to know the terrain and understand how you match up with it. Play to your strengths, manage risk, and take advantage of every opportunity. Still like driver? No, I like the three wood Z. I like to take those bunkers out of play. It's 262 and downwind. Work with people who can show you the territory and you'll make better decisions. This is the power of being understood. This is McGladry. When you're coughing, can't breathe, forget old greasy rubs. Get new Icy Hot No Mess Vapor Gel, a fast-acting medicine in a no-mess gel. Soothes airways with cooling vapors. New Icy Hot No Mess Vapor Gel. Breathe. A sigh of relief. We now offer phone service for $1.70 a month with Magic Jack. That's just $19.95 a year. $19.95 a year. We give you free local and long distance and your own phone number. Make us your new phone company or add a second line with Magic Jack. Psst. Want to know the best kept secret in life insurance? You can save up to 75% depending on what policy you buy. Let's say you're a 40 year old man and you want a half million dollar term policy. Buy an American General Life policy through Matrix Direct and you'll pay less than $22 a month. Buy a similar State Farm Life policy and it could cost you $40 a month. While a nationwide policy could run you $48 a month. Let's compare those rates again. 
American General Life through Matrix Direct, less than $22. State Farm Life, $40. And Nationwide, $48. No wonder millions of Americans have already contacted Matrix Direct. The call is free, the quote is free, and there's no obligation. Make the future more secure for those you love. Call today or visit MatrixDirect.com. For a free quote, call 1-800-436-0270. That's 1-800-436-0270. Or visit MatrixDirect.com. We are looking... Wait a minute. Let me answer that. Let me answer that. Let him speak. World thinkers go head-to-head in a battle of ideas, wit, and persuasion. The next Intelligence Squared debate, coming soon to Bloomberg Television. Welcome back, everybody. You're watching Street Smart on Bloomberg. We're talking with our chief Washington correspondent, Peter Cook. He's up on Capitol Hill with Virginia Democratic, uh, Democrat, that is, Mark Warner, and Georgia Republican, Saxby Chambliss. Senators, I just want to throw a question out to you because I'm listening to what you're saying, and I think everybody agrees something needs to be done at the deficit. But both of you, I, I'm guessing, and I know, will have programs that will be impacted by the deficit cuts we need to make. Um, Senator Warner, let me start with you. Are you prepared to make the necessary cuts that we need to bring this deficit under control? And what specifically are you willing to cut? Listen, I'm willing to take the president's commission, which had cuts and reforms to Social Security, Medicare, defense, and move forward with that as a legislator. Now that will change as we go through the process, but you got to put it all on the table. If you start taking stuff off the table before you even start this process, then we're not being serious. Are you concerned, Senator Chambliss, that once you make cuts like that, you won't be reelected? I mean, uh, you won't get a chance to go back and continue that kind of work? Well, certainly everybody has got to have their ox gored a little bit here. I mean, it's just going to happen. Uh, that's why we said earlier that there's some things in this that uh, everybody's not going to like uh, because it does affect them. But there are so many uh, good provisions in here from the standpoint of addressing both the mandatory and the discretionary side that it's imperative, as Mark says, that we just put it all out there. Now, we know as we go through the process on the floor, folks are going to have amendments. They're going to want to change it, and if they can get the votes to do it, they will. But if we don't have everybody participating in the sacrifice, it won't work. Senator, let me follow up and ask you about the strategy here, because there are a lot of people focusing on this debt limit vote that's coming up soon. Is there any chance you all would have this legislation prepared to go in time for that? Maybe you would link these two issues, debt limit and, and in exchange for consideration of uh, this legislation. Well, I think Mark and I would, uh, we'd love to see that happen. Uh, that's something that we don't control, that uh, the leadership on both sides will have to make a decision about that. Um, but I don't think there's any question but what you're going to see an effort made on the House side as well as on this side about conditions being put on that debt limit vote. And we think this would be a good, uh, good condition to impose. Senator Warner, give us a sense of where you all stand right now. I know you've been talking with your colleagues right now. You had some step on the floor in December. Speak uh, had, highly of this. Uh, what are your numbers? We had 18 senators step up on the floor in a bipartisan way. One of the few times in the last two years that's happened. We've got to make sure that those and others who've said, hey, we want to be part of this effort, will put their name on this. And I think the bigger number of co-sponsors we get in this legislation, the more we can demonstrate to the leadership of both parties, the president, and frankly to the American public and the business community that we're serious. You, you're a business guy. You came from the, the, the business world. The other day, Japan had its debt right. downgraded. Is that a real risk for the United States Listen, right now? Peter, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's not a question of if we're going to do deficit reduction. It's only a question of when. Are we going to do it on our timetable in a reasonable way, or are we going to wait until the markets force it upon us? I think it's much more reasonable for folks like Saxby and I, and he's been a great partner on this, to say we're going to do this in an orderly, reasonably way that will phase in over a number of years, but we've got to start acting now. Senator Chambliss, there are going to be people who look at this and say, this is bipartisanship on paper. You all get along well. You're uh, communicating on this issue. But when push comes to shove, this is never going to get done. Peter, let me tell you, uh, Mark and I are, don't have any uh, illusions or grandeur about this. This is going to be tough. There are going to be very difficult votes that people are going to have to make. And as Matt said, there could be political consequences. But this issue is so serious that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs says that it's the number one national security issue for the United States. That's how serious it is. And it's just imperative that we keep this ball moving and that we get this done. And we're going to have to do it in a bipartisan way. But there are going to be tough votes that are going to have to be made. 
All right, Senator Chambliss, Senator Warner, thanks to both of you. Appreciate yes, it very you. much. Uh, Matt and Carol, we'll send it back to you in New York.